Hey guys, Pastor Phil again. Hey, thank you so much for joining us in our production today when wonder meets all. Wherever you're viewing this, whatever time you're viewing this, hey, thank you so much. And I just pray that this Christmas that you experience the power of Emmanuel, God being with us, the life-changing power of Christmas. And, uh, you know, every year we bring a special Christmas offering. We give our best gift at Christmas. And this year, we've been letting our proceeds go to our Sunshine Center. Many of you heard us talk about the Sunshine Center over the last couple of years, and we have this vision. It's in the making. It's in the architect. We've been meeting. We're going to break ground this coming year and of just building a center, building a place where we can make Jesus available and accessible to every family, regardless of what the disability of their child is or the adult is and we're so excited about the partnership that's been created with heartland christian center with our community and with you and i just want to ask you today on this very christmas season would you give your very best gift beyond your tithe beyond your offering if heartland is not your normal place of, of stewarding your tithe hey make sure you stay faithful to your local church but would you give a special offering there's a link right in below me you can click that link you can go to hcc.ag go to give sunshine center give us your best offer and i guarantee you you'll see the blessing of the lord overflow your life because you are loving those that so many people so many times they will are the forgotten people in the forgotten places of our community hey we love you let's get back to the program see god do some amazing things god bless you Jesus, it's cold outside. I've never seen nothing like it before. It's been in your 2000 since it's been snowing like that. It is so cold out there that poor little old dogs is frozen to the fire hydrants all up and down the street. It's That's horrible, Lou. Mm, good morning, darling. Good morning. Oh, sorry I'm late. I had to shovel my way out, and I don't like that. Not at all. That's okay. No, it ain't okay. <laughs> you ain't got my back. It hurts. Aw. Hey, you should have called me. Nah, it's all right. I do it myself. <laughs> Tough old broad when you're raised in the South, you have to learn how to deal with life, girl. I know. Hey, is Gabe's in the back? Yes, he's still in the back digging for Christmas decorations. Are you kidding me? That boy, Christmas, what, two days away, and he's still digging out Christmas. I ain't uh, never seen nothing like him in all my life, honey. I don't mm -hmm. get it either. Uh-oh, he dropped the salt mm -hmm. shaker. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gabe. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, why do you like Christmas so much? Well, I mean, what kind, of, what kind of question is that? I mean, 
You've got lights on your trees. You've got a roaring fire that you can sit by. You get to come together with your family. You have carolers on your doorstep singing these wonderful songs about how great Christmas is. And then you come together with your family and have a good meal. I mean, come on. Who doesn't like ham? True. And what's that thing that I'm missing? Uh, Hallmark movies, hot cocoa. <laughs> hot cocoa, yes. Hallmark movies, I'll pass. All jokes aside, I mean, how can you celebrate Christmas and not celebrate Jesus? I mean, he's the reason for a season. No, I get it. Oh, no. That sounds like Walt. I ain't never yep. seen nothing like it in all my life. He Me rides either. the bike no matter when. Rain this weather? Walt, I cannot believe that you rode your motorcycle in weather like this, man. You're would, crazy. Right? Would you stop your whining? Get on in the restaurant. I can't believe you're not riding. It's not that bad yet. Listen, it's not whining. It's wisdom, Walt. It's absolute wisdom. You're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, hey Walt. Miss Lou. How are you, darling? It's hey, so good Walt. to see Eli, you. How's it going? <laughs> Mr. Eli, how are you? Doing good. Doing Y'all like to have a cup of coffee? Y'all want the usual? Or y'all yes. want breakfast or what? Yes, please put something in this, guys. He's a little wimp. <laughs> All right. He can add something into it. To... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Walt. If you want to ride your motorcycle so bad, why don't you ride your motorcycle on up here on Christmas Eve for Mary's program? L would you get off me about this silly program you talk keep talking about? Oh, hey, Gabe. Gabe, What's will up? you come here for a second, please? Will you give me a hand? Will you please tell Walter here? that he needs to show up to Mary's program on Christmas Eve. Oh, come on, leave me alone about this thing. Wait, are, you, are you trying to say you can't make it, Walt? Oh, oh, Gabe, it's not that he can't make it. It's a choice, he won't make it. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be real here, it's Walt. I mean, has he been known to make plans and then cancel like that? Listen to the man. Well, listen, I, I mean, if plans, if you think these plans, staying at home all night on Christmas Eve, binge watching Netflix, watching the same episodes of A Cowboy Way all over, over, and over, and over, and over again so we can learn different ways to talk and, and build that persona, making plans, then, then yeah, I mean, that's probably what's going to be happening. Listen, do you want me to take you outside? You keep talking about my Cowboy Way. That brings me back to my roots, man. <laughs> it brings you cowboy, back to your roots. Cowboy, motorcycles. Listen, well, I'll tell you what. Go ahead. Watch your little show. Play with your Harley all night long. <laughs> Make little old Mary cry herself to sleep if you don't show up. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Mary, would you please tell these guys, these knuckleheads, I'm not going to make you cry if I don't show up to your little singy thing, Christmas thing, whatever you call it. Well, I mean, I don't think I'm going to cry about it. See there, guys. Mary's fine. Get off my case. Settle. But it may just ruin Christmas morning for me. Are you kidding me? I can't believe it. See there, Walt, look what you've done. You've made Mary to the point that she don't even want to open up her Christmas presents on Christmas morning. Oh, Shame I mean, you. well, there you have it, Walt. You, you see what you've done? You've taken away the will to open up Christmas presents. I hope you're happy. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe you guys. And... I don't even think I'll be able to eat Christmas dinner either. Are you kidding? Really? Walter, bless your little heart. Honey, for years you've been trying to wipe Christmas off the calendar. Looks like you're trying to do it again this year. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you guys, leave me alone about this. I'm not coming. This Christmas, I'm staying at home, watching a little TV, tinkering with a Harley, I just want to be by myself this Christmas. Just leave me alone about it. Oh, come on, Walt. You and I know both know as nice as your Harley is. Is that a replacement for us, your friends? I mean, let's be real here. We're pretty annoying, but, like, we still love you and still spend time with you and care about you, and we want you to come to this. I mean, like... Hey, I'm not coming. Get off of me. I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm going to the bathroom. I'm taking a break. Guys, I tell you what. I wouldn't count him out as yet. Huh. If I was a bet woman, I'd put a bet on him that he's going to be here tomorrow night at the diner. <laughs> mm-hmm. I sure will. Lou, I would be afraid that I wouldn't take that bet. He's just so hard-nosed against it all. God, church, Christmas, everything. He's just so grumpy. Oh, 
y'all, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't know him like I do. I've seen that boy. We've been around each other for years. Here, I'm going to sit down and explain something to y'all. I love him. Walter has been in and out of foster homes all of his life. And then when he got 18, of course, he's kicked out on the street because he's considered an adult. And he was in and out of jail all the time. And when he was out of jail, they was looking for him because they knew Walt had done it. Bless his heart. And that's why he's so bitter. He is so bitter. But hold, you only know he's got a heart of gold. That's why he needs to be here tomorrow night. He needs to be here so he can see the Jesus that shines in you, Mary. He's got to be here. And then, too, I got to think about Connie, his wife. Hmm. She changed his life completely. Oh, my gosh. His face lit up when she walked into the room. <laughs> he loved her. She was a good Christian woman, a woman of faith, a prayer warrior. Oh, my Lord. I think, really, that's what attracted Walt to her to begin with. Hmm. Come to think of it, I think her faith became his. Hmm. Then when she died, I think his faith died with her. And he has been searching for that again. He wants that. He just don't realize it. He looks and looks and looks, but that's why he's got to be here. God, we got to just do anything we can to get him here tomorrow night because he's got to hear the story of Jesus and his love and let him experience Christ like you do, Mary. Does it sound like somebody you know? Yeah, but Lou... I mean, you see how he acts. There's no way he's going to come here. I mean, what do you think we should do? Just go to his house and kidnap him and <gasps> make him come here? <laughs> yes! We surely do. Hey, I got a room full of duct tape. I love duct tape. Duct tape fixes anything. And then it covers a multitude of sins, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We could go to his house. Surprise! And then we could knock him down tape up his feet. While you're taping up his feet, I can tape up his hands and then I can smooch on his little face a little bit. Then we can cover his face and we can drag him here, set him in his chair and we can duct tape him in his chair and then he's going to be a captive audience. He won't be able to go nowhere then. Lou, I feel like you've done this before. Once or twice, maybe. We won't mention it. <laughs> All right. So... True crime-inspired plans aside, uh, look, I know Walt thinks it's a closed door on this one, but he opened his heart for Connie, and I think that if we really try, he can open his heart to us. It's like I always say, where a door is closed, God, God has opened a window. window. I've said that before, huh? Yeah. Once yeah. or twice. Are you times. done with your coffee, Eli? All right, nobody All right, thank you. All right. Hi, guys. We got some boxes back in the back. Want to know if y'all help us bring them in? We got a lot of stuff to do for yep. tomorrow night. Absolutely. I just want to take the lights down off the tree, pack up all the stockings and pour down the reeds. I just want Christmas to end. You can leave all the wrapping paper in the store. Just let the fire crackle just a little bit more. I just want Christmas to end. It's me. Just never do it again You know it's those moments I used to love the most That my heart just can't let go I'm holding on I just want Christmas to end The snow is falling And all my world fills up tight I can see little children laughing, but it's a difficult life. Christmas, just go ahead and end. I keep telling stories in you. I keep going back to 
stories of past. Why does it have to come and go so fast? I just want Christmas to end. You know, it's been a long, long year. I don't want to stay right here. Forget about tomorrow. And just never, never, never do it again. Go ahead and end. If you wanted a beach, we should have gotten on a different plane. Whatever. There, let me help you with your jacket. Welcome to Heartland Diner. Here, have a seat right there, sir. Thank let me you. Take your jacket. Thank you. It's so good to have y'all here. I'm going to put your coat right here on your chair. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank God for hot coffee, right? Hey, honey, we thank him every day here. Well, what can I get y'all for today? You know what? Can I just have a caramel latte, but can you make it, like, extra hot, please? Oh, I'll be happy to. What can I get you, sir? Same for me. All right, then. Coming right up. <sighs> Remind me why we didn't go somewhere tropical again? Because the last time we did, you got food poisoned. <laughs> and besides, we've never been here. <laughs> Uh, I'd be getting to see why? Abby. Oh, come on. Food poisoning or not, next time we are going somewhere hot, like the sun. We're getting on a plane tomorrow morning, and if this snow ever lets up, <laughs> we could be home for Christmas. Oh, goody. Abby. Come on, Shep. You can't honestly tell me that you're excited about this. <laughs> well... You know as well as I do, it is hard to get in the Christmas spirit when all you're doing is jumping from house to house to house. Between my divorced parents and your might as well be divorced parents and all the bickering and the arguing. Oh, and let's not forget the guilt trips on whose house we went to first this year. Shoot, I'd rather just get stuck here. You know what, darling? You better be careful what you wish for. Yeah. The way this snow's coming down, you might be stuck here for a while. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind. At least then somebody wouldn't be dragging me to some Don't church service on Christmas Eve where they're all packed in like a bunch mm. of sardines. What is it about Christmas that brings out the Jesus in everybody? Well, I think it's hope, Abby. Christmas brings hope, happiness, and joy. Oh, my. And Gosh. don't look at me that way. I know it sounds like I'm reciting a Christmas card. Yeah, it does. But it's true. And I know Christmas at your house wasn't always like that growing up. No. But it can be. And it should be. And I hope that our Christmases together can be like that now that things have changed. James Shepard, you are not the man that I married. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I love you and all, but... Ever since you started this church thing, I don't know, you're a little less, well, you're a little more, <laughs> honestly, you're a lot less those things that used to tick me off so much. <laughs> so I guess you have changed for the good. I hope so. Christianity just isn't about Christmas and Easter, you know. There's a lot of great stuff in between. Oh my gosh. Just sounds like a bunch of boring sermons, if you ask me. And nobody wants to endure that, Shep. No one wants to spend every Sunday morning at church pretending like they're interested in what's being Who's said. Pretending? All the while, you know they're just thinking about what time is kickoff. And nobody wants to sit there while some holier-than-thou preacher tells them what a bad sinner they are. All the while, he's probably the biggest hypocrite of them all. Heavy. Yep. He's probably dipping his hand in the offering plate or eyeing somebody else's wife. You hear about it all the time, Shep. You Abby, know I'm right. Abby, it's not always like that. Sure, that happens. There are probably Bible beaters in every congregation, but that's not Jesus. Those people have got it all wrong, and they jack it up for everybody. That's not the picture that Jesus painted when he walked on this earth. And that's why just celebrating Christmas and Easter is missing the point. Missing the point? Yes. You have two pictures of Jesus, 
one of a little baby lying in the manger, yeah. and another of a grown man bleeding and dying on the cross. And what happens in between matters a lot. And what happens paints the picture of what our purpose is here on earth. You know how people always ask, what's the meaning of life? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. The answer lies between Christmas and Easter. Hmm. Hey, guys, can I uh, get you anything else? Oh, no, 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 thanks. No, thanks. In fact, Abby, we have to get going. We have to get a good night's sleep because we have to catch an early flight in the morning. Yeah, I know. You going to pray? You give this invitation to them. They're leaving tomorrow morning, Lou. That's okay. I gave it to them. All it needs is an invitation. Hey, guys. Um, I know you guys are going home tomorrow, but just in case, here's an invitation to uh, my concert. It's here tomorrow night at the diner, 7.30, free coffee. You know, just in case. Oh, here? Christmas Eve? That sounds kind of cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for the coffee. You're welcome. And uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, let me get this. Yeah. Just in case. Never know, Lou. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Lou. Honey, you're here off early. Yeah, I just could not sleep. Nerves. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's okay. Hey, the nerves mean that you care about what's happening, but you shouldn't be nervous about singing. Oh, my Lord, that lovely voice of yours, all you have to do is just open up your mouth and let it soar. I know, but, Lou, lately I've just, I don't know, I feel like something's been tugging at my heart the past few really? days. Really? What do you mean, huh? I guess, I mean, well... You know, I plan this whole thing on Christmas Eve, so yeah. people who might not want to go to church or have a hard time with faith can come here and listen to my songs, and it doesn't feel like church, but huh. lately, I don't know, I feel like... You know, I bet you, you feel like God's wanting you to say something, don't you? Yeah, but, I mean, I guess, I mean, I'm not a preacher. No. I just don't even know what God wants me to say. I just feel like he wants me to say something, and I can't shake that feeling off of me. Yeah? You know, Lou, a lot of people don't like going to church. Do you blame them? No, not with all the crazies out there. Honey, there is a lot of misguided Christians in this world huh, claiming to love Jesus, but they don't love him the way he loves them. And you know what? They hate sin, but what's so bad about it? They hate the sinner even more. Um, and not realizing that's who Jesus came for was the sinner. It's just sad. But you know what? Tonight you're going to be a breath of fresh air to everybody. You're going to let them see the joyful Jesus that's inside of you, the kind Jesus that's inside of you, the compassionate Jesus that's inside of you, and you're just going to let it shine, shine, shine. Well, thanks, Lou, but, I mean, I still don't know what I'm going to say tonight. You know what, Mary? You're just going to have to trust the Lord with that. God's going to give you uh, the things to say because God is good, and he's going to help you through everything that you're going through tonight. Oh, my goodness, it's cold out there. Hey, uh, Eli. Hey, how's it going? Well, 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 if it isn't Eli. How's it going, man? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve. I'll tell you what, I haven't experienced anything that cold since Walt's interaction with us yesterday. I'll that be honest with you, that was pretty rough. That was horrible. That was rough. I'll tell you what, can I get a cup of coffee to go? Yeah, you sure can. Hit Here the you road. Go. Thank you very much. Where um, Where is Walter? Well, I'll tell you what, I hit him up on the way out this morning to see if he want coffee. It took three calls before he'd even answer. Uh, oh, that uh, sounds like him. Yeah, but and uh, the time he finally answered, uh, it was just kind of... It was, coughing, <laughs> like sneezing, basically everything. But I'll tell you, he's probably just at home, probably six episodes deep into Love is Blind, yes. walking around, acting out a cowboy's way, yeah. uh, and probably just eating a full block of cheese. That sounds just like Just all it. by himself. Cheese and crackers. On, cheese and crackers. You know Walt. So yes. I'll tell you what, though. I'll take an extra to all go right. in case I do see him shortly. That sounds good. And uh, I'll see you guys right. this evening for your program, that Mary. sounds good. All right. So, 
Merry Christmas Eve. See you Merry guys later. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Be careful. Yep. Honestly, I was so relieved when that red cancellation light just started blinking across <laughs> that departure board. You know what? For the first time in a long time, Christmas might actually be peaceful, even if it is a thousand miles from home. I'll be your home, Abby. Aw, oh, babe. Oh, hey, so does anybody know of any good churches we could go to around here? Are you kidding me? No. Wait, is it Mary's thing tonight? Yes, Mary is singing tonight. That's right, and we would love to have you. We invited you. Yes. That's right. Yes. A lot of our friends and family is going to be here. Gabe's going to be here. I'm going to be here. We'd love for y'all to join us. Yeah, they would love it. Hey, Chef, honey, honey, I, I mean... We're going go, to church. I know it's not the traditional church thing, but babe, these people have been really nice to us. It sounds kind of cool. Come on, babe, let's try something different. Please, honey. Mary, it's Mary, right? Yeah. Happy wife, happy life. I think we'll be seeing you tonight. Hey, bye. Hey, hey Gracie, Grace. come on in. I want coffee, please. All right, darling, you come over and sit down and I'll get it for you. But um, before I start, I just want to say something. No sermon or anything like that, so don't worry. But I love Christmas so much. But I haven't always. You see, when I was a little girl, Christmas morning was always a wonderful experience. My parents always made sure that my brother and sister and I got everything we asked for. I remember one year, I really wanted this one special baby doll. I remember I circled the one I wanted out of the catalog. I knew it was expensive, but I really wanted that. I started getting a little disappointed because once Christmas started appearing and Christmas presents started getting underneath the tree, I knew there wasn't a box big enough for my doll. And here it came Christmas morning, we opened up all the presents, and like always, we got everything we asked for and more. But still no doll. My mom left for a few and she came back and she said she'd forgotten one more present, and it was for me. My heart was beating so fast. And there I was, I opened it up and it was my doll. I began to cry happy tears. Ever since I was a little girl, I cannot wait to become a wife and mother. In elementary school and career day, I remember girls would be dressed up as teachers and lawyers and doctors. And there I was, dressed up as a mom. <laughs> My mom was always afraid that I would have 17 children like her grandmother. You know, I was raised in a godly, loving Christian family I had a wonderful example set before me, and Christmas was always a wonderful experience for me. I did eventually get married. And shortly after I got married, I found myself living a life I had never planned for. Soon after I was married, huh, it was probably around Christmas time, I found out I was expecting my first baby. I was finally getting to become a mom. I will never forget hearing that heartbeat for the first time. It was the sweetest sound I've ever heard. I also will never forget walking in the hospital and the doctor telling me that they weren't able to find the heartbeat anymore. I asked them many times to double check. I remember looking at the screen and once where I saw life inside me, I didn't see a little one moving anymore. And as I laid on that hospital bed, I was looking at the screen and I was praying to myself that God would just give them breath. I thought I was just living a bad dream. I wanted so bad to see that movement again. But my prayers were unanswered. I struggled hard during that time. Growing up in church, I knew that I did not serve a God of punishment but I thought that's what was happening to me. 
I thought that I was getting punished for the choices I had made. I believe that God was allowing me to experience that much hurt and pain because I caused hurt and pain to people who loved me so much. That was one of the most painful moments that I had to go through. But as the years came and went, I began to associate the holidays with hurt and pain and disappointment. I felt like it was always beyond my control. Eventually, I had to make a decision that I never thought I'd have to make. My marriage came to an end, putting me more into a season of more fear and sorrow. Here I was, a single mom of three little boys, unsure of the future and what it holds. Over the following months, I came to the realization that it's possible to mourn more than just a physical death of a person. The death of all I once knew, the death of my dreams, the death of my family, the absent of someone from my life, but not absent from the world. I now know what it feels like to be abandoned and wondering if life can ever feel good again. If I would ever feel good again about myself and confident again, if I would ever believe I was good enough, if my life would ever feel normal and happy, sometimes even if I would survive. During the first year of divorce, it was a painful journey. Grief was one of my closest companions. Grief is a painful season to endure, regardless of why you're grieving, but it's necessary for the healing process. Grief, even if ugly, can be the process that God can use to help us to arrive at a place of healing and wholeness and happiness. If you're suffering through a physical death or the death of a marriage or any long-term relationship, take comfort in knowing that God will hold you close, but in time, He will rescue you from that grief. He's a God who heals hearts. He's a God who heals minds. We're never alone on this journey. And never forget that you have a lot to live. And you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And with God on your side, you'll soon realize that you're on your way to healing and wholeness and happiness. Don't give up. You know, every night I would put my little boys to bed and I would sit on my bed and I'd always have a good cry and I guess sometimes just a pity party. But I always heard the Lord to tell me to hold on and don't give up. The Bible references to 28 different seasons of life. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to weep, a time to rejoice, a time to gather stones, and a time to scatter stones. I could continue to go on, but you know what is never on that list? All 28 different seasons, all 28 different moments. You never know what is never mentioned is a time to quit. It's never time to quit. Eventually, God did provide me healing and he, he provided me an opportunity to be a part of, of a family that now feels complete. And believe it or not, I do look forward to the holidays again. So don't give up on your dreams and don't give up on the promises of God over your life. God may be saying to you today, I know it's painful now, but it will turn good into later. When no foundations have been shaken, when I'm there standing in the dark, and all I feel is my heart breaking, you still reign in your The heavy questions hit so hard And though my soul may feel forsaken You still reign and you're still God Though I can't see what's before me
that you enjoyed today as you was joining us online and that the presentation spoke to you in some way. Listen, I know during this season, maybe you've been wondering and trying to figure things out and you know, maybe you kind of find yourself in the same seat as Walt where you've experienced loss, you've experienced frustration, right? You've experienced things uh, in life happening that maybe you weren't expecting and you're probably asking yourself, where is God in all of this? Uh, you know, maybe you've lost your way a little bit. You've lost your faith. Or maybe you're kind of like that character, Mary, that you've seen life and you've had things happen to you and you've seen yet the hand and, and the presence of God traced in your life. And yet you're still trying to wonder, what does it look like next? Like, how do I go on from this point in my life? And really that's what the Christmas message is all about. God sending his son, his very best to this earth for us, and Emmanuel, that's what they said Jesus' name would be. The angel pronounced Emmanuel, God is with us, that he's there for us. And so no matter where you're at today, no matter where you're at this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching, maybe you're trying to figure out, man, does God love me? Does he have a plan for me? This season is all about you, Emmanuel, God is with us. He's there for you. And I wanna pray for you today that maybe you're experiencing some pain, maybe you're experiencing some frustration, maybe you just needed that reminder today uh, to know that, man, God is with me. We're gonna pray that that would be the message today, that the reminder would be Emmanuel. God is right there with you. So come on, can I pray with you right now? God, I just thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. God, thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. Lord, the very best gift that you gave to us, Emmanuel, God is with us. So God, and God, I pray, Lord, right there in the living room, God, wherever it is they may be watching today, God, out of every mom, every dad, every grandma, every grandpa, every student, that God, whatever it is that they're going through, God, maybe they find themselves like Walt and they're frustrated and they're just wanting this season to get over with because of things that have happened, life that's been going, circumstances that are unfavorable. God, maybe they find themselves like Mary, God, and they've seen your hand at work, but they don't know what it's gonna look like in the future. Is it, is it gonna be okay? Are things gonna turn around? And God, I just pray, Lord, right there today, Lord, that you would remind them. God, you would remind them of that, of that gift, of your best gift, your son, Jesus, or Emmanuel. God is with us. And God, maybe today, Lord, we have never accepted that gift. We've never accepted your son, Jesus. And God, I just pray that if that's us today, God, right where we're watching, right in this moment, that God, today we would just surrender our life to you. 
God, we would invite you to come in and be the Lord and be the leader of our life. Lord, we'd accept that gift. Lord, we'd accept your gift. Lord, your son given to us, meaning Emmanuel, God, that you are with us right in the very moment that we are today. And God, we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.